It's a Wednesday. Good morning. Everybody in the South, Southeast, South Gulf states are going nuts today and yesterday as the snow came down heavy. New Orleans, almost a foot of snow in some places, which is all time. It doesn't happen like that. Now, I was thinking about this is uh, Alan Bouchard. I don't know him. I just pulled this off. Uh, I think it's USA Today, but this is in Houston and it points out in my mind, first of all, what snow does to people. It, 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 there's a, it has an impact on you. So I grew up in a place where it snowed. We'd have snow days maybe once every three or four years. And we would, so we're kind of used to it, semi. And we'd freak out, just go nuts, just go crazy. Maybe three inches of snow, four inches. Some one time we had like a foot, which, which was a lot. But I'm thinking about these guys in Houston, in New Orleans, Florida, Georgia, Atlanta. They don't, they don't see snow very much, especially these guys in Houston. So you talk about freaking out on steroids, and that's what the pictures are awesome. I mean, it is nutty. And I'm, I, I would be, I wonder how many ACLs got blown out last 24 hours, just people doing dumbass stuff. And I'm, I'm not criticizing because I would be doing dumbass stuff too. I would grab a snowball, I'd throw it, I'd ice skate on a fountain. I'd do everything these guys are doing. And in their defense, I have friends who, um, who grew up in Tahoe, like grew up in Tahoe, multi-generational families. And they still freak out when it snows. They would hate that I'm telling you this, but they do. They get stoked because it's like it's just something magical, especially on a big snow. But they get snow, right? It's all winter. Every every third day when it's going right, they get snow and they still freak out. So what's happening down there is it's mellowing out a little bit, but the cool air continues to exist. And so through the Ohio, Mississippi valleys in here, you know, five degrees. These are current temperatures. So this is around lunchtime, a little before lunch. But you're, you're, you're in the teens. So you've got infrastructure not set up for this. You've got pipes that'll freeze. I mean, there's going to be the next couple of days, especially Ohio, middle Ohio, Mississippi Valley, Kentucky, Tennessee. There's going to be a lot of cold, cold overnights for the next 36 hours. And so you're going to have searching infrastructure problems, especially, I mean, do you think they have snow plows in, in New Orleans? I don't think so. That kind of was interesting too, because it is record snowfall. This stuff, some of these stuff goes back to 1895, the last time they saw anything like this. But you've got really dry, cold Canadian continent air. This is where it's coming from. I think we talked about it yesterday. But it's an air mass, right? And so this thing comes down. Now, it usually doesn't get much further than this. So it's dry. It's just dry. And the humidities are super low. But what happened was the cold air got all the way down to here. Oh, and it meets the warmer Gulf of Mexico waters, which are kind of record warm in some places and have been for the last six, eight months. So that record warm it gets caught up with that really, really cold air. And bam, you got an explosion. And you got almost a foot, almost a foot of snow in New Orleans. Around the Bay Area, we've got a snow advisory. And we've got in the dark purple here, we got freeze warnings and a freeze warning in the Central Valley. When you see these, you can almost always bet for us that there is no, um, there's no uh, weather. It's, it's a high pressure. It's a, it's, a, it's a stable environment. When you get dense fog advisories, when you get freeze warnings, frost advisories, typically for us, not, not every time, but most of the time, it's because you got this, this high pressure that's keeping storms away, keeping clouds away, which would get us warmer and allowing temperatures to get very cold. Southern California, they have uh, this alert again, and it's basically a red flag warning that lasts through um, Thursday night into Friday. And you can see some of the areas of wind advisories here and the purple areas here. But what's also encouraging to me is you do see the small craft advisories offshore which might be a little like today. I think there is a little bit of an onshore wind, which is helpful for firefighters. I'm checking the winds now. You know what to look for on these. We went, the numbers are the current wind speeds. This might, might be hard to, to read, but it is in my, it's Meso West and it's in my um, links page. But you can, the, the barbs, right? This is a, the wind is blowing this way. The ball is the arrow. So that wind's blowing that way out by Catalina. But, but the winds are all over the place. It's not this howling offshore vector kind of a situation. So right now, all good. This is the HRRR, it's a rapid update model. This is wind speeds at the surface. And what we can do is, I want to point out, can you, okay, so here's Southern California. And this is over the next 24 hours. So not much wind yet. We just looked at that. Starts to show up, right? You start seeing winds. Those are around 30, 25 miles an hour up in the hills. 
starting to blow, starting to blow. This is, okay, and it's starting to go, and this is overnight, and I believe this is, yeah, this is Thursday morning, and then you see it starting to go. So Thursday morning's got some game, and then you see it really, especially down the, the uh, border with Mexico, and then you see it kind of start to fade out. So it really peaks right in here. It does not look as aggressive, it doesn't look as aggressive as what we've seen in the past, but it's still an offshore wind event, Santa Ana event. And again, you can kind of pick out the Venturi components here, which are um, the areas that funnel. We talked about it last night, funneling through the canyon. So the wind starts in the mountains, comes down, hits the flats out in the basin, LA Basin kind of spreads out and goes eh, and wanders around and then finds Topanga Canyon and, and right and squeezes and goes like a, um, a fire ho or a water hose with your thumb over. As soon as it finds that canyon, it accelerates. And that model picks up on that nicely, doesn't it? You see these accelerations of wind where you didn't before. So that is the forecast. It doesn't look extreme, but it's always dangerous. And the upshot to Southern California is they're going to see some scattered shower potential on Saturday. We'll get to that. So here's the snow in the mountains. Super clear day. West Slope of Sierra Nevada. Uh, Mount Shasta up here. We'll look at that later, as we always do. Lake Tahoe here. Mammoth Mountain down in here. Whitney, Mount Whitney. Point Conception right here. No fog along the coast. Beautiful day. There is a little bit of cloud cover way down here by LA, which is filtering the sunshine. But you talk about, I mean, I know we need rain. Um, and we'll, we'll get some in February. We do need rain, especially Southern California, right? 1% of average in some places. But um, this weather is just stunning. This is live picture. You can get this off the Alert Sandy, uh, California page um, from UC San Diego. They did a hell of a job on, if, I just, it gets on my links. But go to Alert California, UC San Diego, and be blown away at all the camera potential. So this is a live darn picture, Mount Shasta. Been cold up there. Lots of snow on the mountain, and it's not melting. This is Heavenly Valley. This is an Alert Cam as well. And you can see the lake. Obviously, you're looking over towards the North Lake here. And then this is South Lake Tahoe here. And what's the first thing I look at is I go, whoo, there is zip wind, zero wind. How do I know? Look at the lake. Right, you know that. There's a little bit of wind out in the middle there, but most uh, beautiful Lake Bigler. You know that? You ever, you know, you ever heard it called Lake Bigler? Uh huh. A little bit of a California nugget. Bigler, I should know more about Bigler, but he was the first governor of the state, and I he changed the name of Lake Tahoe to Lake Bigler, B I G Bigler. I know. I know, isn't that funny? You probably know this. And um, somebody got 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 right in the head and said Bigler's a horrible name, right? So they they turned it back to Tahoe. And I think Bigler was the first. I think he was the first governor in the state of California. I'll know. I'm, I'm, I, I hope that's right. That's some um, lake, or that was um, Heavenly Valley uh, Alert Cam. And then this is oh, we're up on um, Mammoth Mountain, and we're looking out towards the Owens Valley. Whole. St Owens Valley story. If you ever get a chance, read uh, Calif uh, Cadillac Desert and learn a lot about Owens Valley and learn a lot. No more than anybody and amaze your friends with how much you know about water and how it works in California. Seriously, this guy. Cal and Cadillac Desert's an old, older book too, but it is the, in my mind, it's the quintessential. It's, yeah, yeah. This is California. This is how messed up the water rights are and this is what we're really dealing with i mean it's one time and i've mentioned this in another video and then we're gonna look at this as the gfs um i go okay if i can understand water rights in california they can't fire me i'll always have a job in tv because i can i'll understand these intricate issues i bought a few books some cursory books some you know third grade level reading books <laughs> now you know but and then i worked my way up to like a a, a big just bible california water rates i put it down after like two days i couldn't i it's so convoluted it is so confusing and it is so it's not good the way we the way we treat water we'll talk about that some other time um in terms of how we allocate it who gets free water right you know all about that right owens valley tulare lake Right, Owens Valley was the Maholan thing, making selling real estate in LA. So the history of California is so checkered, but interesting as all heck, um, and not well told. Because California, 
you know, we came out here, the people who came out here wanted to write their own history. So they tried to erase the Indians, they tried to erase the Hispanics, the Latinos, they tried to erase the Peruvians, the Australians. I mean, I'm, my family's a part of that. Not, I don't hope not directly, but that's kind of what we do. And so the history books get written by those folks and, the book, and many of the history books are just so not right. Cadillac Desert, you'll like a lot. I'm sure you will. And it's, it's not a hard read. It's a, it's a big book, but it talks about water rights and how things got allocated and talks about uh, Tulare Lake, the largest lake west of the Mississippi at one time. You could, at one point, you could take a boat from Bakersfield to Sacramento. Bakersfield to Sacramento. This is before all the dams went in, right? And it was Tulare Lake. Got drained, turned into cotton farms, a whole, but very kind of checkered, checkered deal. Okay, so a little, little side angle there. Here we are. We're at halfway up through the atmosphere. So this is kind of where the jet stream is. 500 millibars, that's pressure. It's 1,000 millibars at the surface. You go halfway up in the atmosphere, it's 500 millibars. You know how when you're swimming at the bottom of a swimming pool, your ears hurt? There's more pressure down lower. So it's 1,000 millibars approximately. And if you go a little closer to the surface, a little farther up in the atmosphere, you're at 500 millibars. That's less pressure. So that's kind of where the jet stream lives. And then this is uh, the red and yellows represent instability. And not necessarily, not moisture, but instability. So what we're really watching is, okay, we're looking for big signatures of potential rain. And so if the first signature comes in, here we go, nothing, 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 right here. See it? California, see that? That's a signature. That's an inside slider. That's going to go out. It comes off the land, so it's dry, but it sweeps out over the ocean by southern, by Los Angeles. That's why they could see a third of an inch of rain. Awesome rainfall, not damaging. Shouldn't be a lot, so they're not going to be concerned about mudslides. They, they'll mention it, but shouldn't be an issue. Mountains could see two to three inches of snow. That is on uh, Saturday, and then you see it click out. Cooler air. That The main thing for the Bay Area and Central and Northern California is going to be colder. Instead of mid-60s, where we have been, we're going to drop back into the 50s. And then there's a big dome of high pressure. It's high, high, high. It is February 2nd now. And then kind of a clip here. That's on February 3rd. And then there's something right there. That's a bit of an inside slider, too. It's very similar system. It's going to be not as wet. And then I think that's about it. So not encouraging, not encouraging through the seventh. Does that mean that's how it goes? No, does not mean that's how it goes. It means that's what this model says on this day. I'll check it in six hours. It'll be a little bit different. I'm really going on today, aren't I? Hmm. But there's so much to talk about. California is so awesome. I mean, we're, oh, we're at the beach now, right? We're in San Francisco, Ocean Beach. It's a good day at the beach. This guy's doing what I do. He's looking at it going, where do I go out? The paddle out's not bad. That inside sandbar, see how it's thumping? That's, it looks like, oh, I'll just get past that. It's really hard to get past that inside sandbar. Once you get out here to the outer bars, right there where it's breaking, that's good times. But you, then you'll see it go fat. See how the, the wave went fat here? It's getting deeper. So the sandbars are still a little screwy. Tides are dropping right now. This guy's picked his point. Paddle out, though. The paddle, I'd paddle out over here. Okay, so that's Ocean Beach. Temperature of the water right now, 55 degrees Ocean Beach. We're at Huntington Beach right now. Temperature, water temperature there, not much warmer. It's 57 degrees at Huntington Beach. Swells are small. Never really, Huntington's funny because the wind blows, it gets real windy in the morning there. This is Palisades, Tahoe, parking lot. Nope, Funatel. And I think that's the Funatel, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this is not the best of videos. It's, it's rotating camera. Um, very cold up there. The crowd, I wanted to show you a shot, but they moved the camera. Uh, the crowd, not too bad up there right now. Uh, it's raw, icy in the morning. So you may want to not um, may want to not ski in the morning, but ski in the afternoon. Okay, this is far east. It, uh, Palisades again, and I think you can see there's a chairlift. You'll, it's a live picture, and you should see chairlifts moving. What's happening up in the Palisades? Just more of the same. I mean, just more um, nice weather, dry. Maybe snow flurries on Friday. And there you go. So I covered a lot. What's, what's the main point? The takeaways here are LA's under the gun for the next 36 hours for red flag warnings, but not as severe. Bay Area, dry, 
even Saturday looks like maybe some clouds and cooler, but dry and warm today and tomorrow, mid 60s to even upper 60s in the Bay Area. Then we get to Saturday and Sunday and temperatures really cool down. Snow flurries in the mountains we, on Saturday. We, have, we will continue to have frost advisories and freeze warnings probably through the next 24 to 36 hours. And then the long range model, not very encouraging at all in terms of rainfall. And again, you're talking to, uh, about a state that now has a deficit in the south of Point Conception of 2% of rainfall, 1% of rainfall average. It hasn't rained. So in every, and by the way, the Santa Ana's will keep coming. As long as it's not raining, this cycle, this pattern of the high building in, the low going by, the wind, the pressure gradient, that, that, that pattern will keep repeating itself. So it's not like the Santa Ana's go away. Um, if, unless it rains and start getting rain, then that changes the pressure system. But right now the pressure systems are continuing to do this feedback loop where they just keep reinforcing the winds in Southern California, even up here, but we've had so much rain. Okay, have a great day uh, tomorrow. We're gonna talk Thursday and uh, that's about it. Have a good one.